And after defining where the information is, we define what is the information. So I want to get the secret called token within my key vault. Hello, everyone. Today at Open at Microsoft, we have Gustavo. Hello, Gustavo. Hello. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you on the show on this episode. And you're going to deep dive on external secrets. I met Gustavo at KubeCon, uh, Salt Lake City, and we talk about, about this open source project that's growing very fast on the Kubernetes space. Gustavo, tell me more what's external secrets and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am Gustavo, uh, one of maintainers of external secrets. External secrets is becoming the way to manage secrets within Kubernetes. Uh, especially when we think about GitOps, it helps us to define the secrets within Git by doing a reference to a secret store. So you keep all your sensitive information on Key Vault, for instance, and then you just reference which are the bits of information that you need, put it on Git, that gets to your cluster, and external secrets will make sure that the Kubernetes secret object exists and it synchronizes with Key Vault. That was its original uh, feature. Of course, the project already grew a lot. We have so many features. Uh, I want to actually talk about some of them because they are actually cool. That sounds great. Looks like we are looking also for new contributors for the for the project. And I can oh, see a yes. lot of stars there. Of course. Uh, it's actually a community-built uh, project. So it was a gathering of over 19 projects back then in 2020 to create external secrets operator. Every feature, no matter how big or, how sm or small, was contributed by the community. Uh, the maintainer effort is really to filter down, to make sure they are sustainable and to apply security, really. That's really what we do there. That sounds great. Do you want to share your screen and you start talking about of course. how those projects get together? And Of course, of course. So I have brought up to show you here three use cases. Uh, the first one is the simple usage of external secrets. We are basically going to get a given key from Key Vault and bring it over to our cluster, to a Kubernetes secret manifest. Then we are going to do the other way around. This here is probably where we differentiate from other projects. If you think about secret store CSI driver, you can now only do this bit from the Key Vault to your application. With external secrets, you can also do the other way around. Where does this come useful? Let's say you installed an application with a Helm chart. That Helm chart generated a secret. It's bad to have that secret isolated on one Kubernetes cluster. You can actually send them back to your central source of truth, which is Azure Key Vault in this case. But we can also do some uh, fancy stuff with external secrets. We can use it to generate dynamic information. So in our example with push secrets, we are actually generating a password. Let's say an application password, you name it. And then last, we are going to go with our coolest feature, in my opinion, which is dynamic tokens. One secret which is always, a, which is always difficult to handle in Kubernetes is image pool secrets. With these, we are going to generate dynamic scoped image pool secrets for our application. And we are going to show that. Cool. That that sounds great. Before we go there, how do you compare external secrets with uh, maybe there are a few people watching and they're using CSI drivers? How do you compare that with CSI drivers and why they should move away from CSI drivers and start using external secrets? There is no right answer here. So the the biggest difference when we think about uh, the black use case here, CSI driver will not interface with this. It's Kubernetes secret API, which means that the sensitive information will go directly to the pod uh, as an ephemeral uh, in-memory volume. For some cases, this is actually better because you prevent the information from being on Kubernetes secret. Here, uh, I'm not even talking about if we, it's encrypted or not. Uh, even the fact that the information is copied twice might be a problem for some highly regulated environments. In this case, CSI, a secret store CSI driver is the way to go. However, when that is not the case, 
external secrets is the way to go because a Kubernetes secret is typically the interface for any cloud native tooling. So it will make your configuration of API gateway of ingresses way easier. Uh, if you're using crossplane, it's easier to integrate. If you're using CNIs, it's easier to integrate. Just to give a very, very, very high level example. That sounds good. Do you want to go hands on and show, uh, show us how that of works? Course, of course, of course. I have it ready right here. So for the first demonstration, we have here the simple case, which is synchronizing things with X to Kubernetes secrets. Uh, the way to do that with the external secret manifest, here we define our secret store where the information is available. In this case, it's the Azure Key Vault. For Azure Key Vault, we can connect with service principles. We can connect with uh, workload identity. There are several ways that we can use it to authenticate. And after defining where the information is, we define what is the information. So I want to get the secret called token within my key vault and where to save it. And I want to save it on my cube secret within the API key entry. If I do a kubectl get external secrets, just to show you the status. This is typically how we would look like. We will see it's already ready and that it is synced, meaning everything is running as it should. If I do a kubectl get secret, my cube secret, just to show you, we can see here that the secret exists. And if I do uh, just for us to see the value, we can see the value is here. This is exactly the value that I have on my key vault, a little bit of fun here. If you can see this, it works. So everything is working. This pretty much covers this black use case, which means from an information on Key Vault, we use an external secret manifest, safe to commit to Git, and we are generating a secret which is always in sync to that information. That, that sounds great, um, Gustavo. Means that it's very easy to integrate with Key Vault. I'm assuming it's an open source project. You can That's use correct. different vaults, not just as a Key Vault, means that it's flexible for we, the vault. That's correct. We support over 30 different providers. I think that's probably one of the biggest advantages. Uh, typically, there will be some operators that only works with Key Vault or that works with other cloud providers or even with uh, dedicated secret storage products uh, like OpenBall. However, external secrets is able to connect with all. So if your setup does have that because you're multi-cloud, for instance, External secrets shines even more because it's super easy to mix and match, basically. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine there are companies using sometimes there is a source of truth, but there is also other key votes, like even different regions have different key votes. Um, and what, tell me about that container registry to pull the image, how that works. And that sounds very interesting. And I haven't seen that in other products as well. Of course. So for this one, uh, we leverage another feature for external secrets called the generator. I am clicking it on the screen right here. Uh, what this generator really does is go talk to the container registry for us and create a temporary token. And then with that temporary token, we generate an image pool secret leveraging external secrets. Let me go here for us to go to the action. So when we look at the external secret manifest for this one, it is very similar in its almost total totality. There is this template block that is really just creating the Docker format for it. But the really nice thing about it is this information here at the end. We basically say, hey, I want data from ACR generator. That's it. How do we configure that generator? I have it as an example here. Here we have a ACR access token generator. I have my tenant's ID here, the registry that I want to connect to. And here I have the scope that I want to give my token. Here, we are going to create dynamically a token that only has access to my image and nothing else, okay? And of course, we configure some authentication. Again, multiple methods to authenticate. Well, I'm not going to go over these details. If I go to my terminal here and do a kubectl get 
these external secrets now. We can see that it is secret synced, meaning that I have a secret called ACR image pool secret. Image pool secrets, there is really only way to test. And to do this test, I have created an empty my image and an empty another image within this uh, registry. And I have two deployments here, a good and a bad deploy. The deployments really are just calling out for my empty image and using the image pool secret, okay? If I do a kubectl apply good deploy, we can see here it is already running, image downloaded because it was a super small image, right? And if I apply my bad deploy, the only difference for the bad deploy is that it's an image that I'm not authorized to. So that image pool secret does not work for it. We can see here error image pool because of course we are not authorized to get it. Very powerful, right? Very powerful, very simple. And uh, the only difference you have to make sure that you define the image pool secret. But the, the secret to be dynamically created, I, I think there is expired time that you can set as well. Exactly. On this case, uh, the every one hour, external secrets will generate a new token for you. So one of the biggest Achilles heels on Kubernetes, which is the fact that image pool secrets are long lived, that's gone now. You can create tokens that are specific to images within your repository and make them dynamic, one hour rotation per application, per deployment. The real trouble now is managing image pool secrets really. Cool, right? That sounds great. Then, then we have more than just you know uh, connection with Azure Key Vault. We have now also connection with Azure Container Registry and all the registries as well. Uh, can you show me the, the GitHub uh, hub, uh, the GitHub uh, repo, and tell me how someone from the community can come and become a contributor and help this project to grow? Of course. So our GitHub is external secrets dash external secrets. It's, uh, this is the poll, sorry, is this one. Uh, the best way to contribute if you already are experienced with Golang or want to learn Golang. Uh, can you just uh, zoom uh, in a little bit? Of course, sorry. The best way to contribute if you already are aware of Golang, already uses Golang or wants to learn, is by looking on our good first issues. So going to issue here. I'm not sure if typing it would be enough, yes. We have some good first issues that we maintainers uh, track down and think it's good for people that want to contribute to the project. However, uh, the generators, if you want to create a whole new generator because you think it's useful, that's also totally fine. Uh, it's really, really up to you. The only thing that you really need to do, and for that, it's better to look at our documentation. We do have a developer guide and a contributing process and a code of conduct. Beware that if you want to contribute but you do not want to follow these guidelines, uh, either talk to us on Slack before. Uh, you can reach out to me. I am on uh, at Gus Carvalho on Slack. Super easy to find. You'll be able to ping me on a GitHub issue the way that you want. Uh, the only baseline really is adapt to those. And then everything else, we will be more than happy to welcome you on board on this journey. Thank you so much, Gustav. It was a great you know, introduction for, for external secrets. Uh, please follow us, follow the show, open at Microsoft, subscribe to Microsoft Developer Channel, and see you next time. Thank you, Gustavo. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.